Long range forecast for the Illinois House. Hot. Bill, Representative. He, he, he wants his bill. Members, right members, 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 members. Hot, sprinkled with a drought of patience. It expires. It goes away on August 1st. The budget is out of balance. The budget is out of balance. Democrats pushing for a 30-day temporary budget that could provide a ray of hope for state employees to be paid on time next week. When will you step up to the plate and reflect the values that your constituents sent you here to reflect? Minority Republicans trying to make a splash with their own bill to pay state employees for next year. Not a bill that's lumped with a bunch of other stuff that doesn't help the state of Illinois, but a bill that pays the state employees for what they are doing. Dripping with sarcasm, House Speaker Mike Madigan frequently says Governor Rauner is extreme. Representative Bill Mitchell calls the Republican budget fix reasonable. Not in the extreme, moderate. Let's do it. Democrats ignoring dark clouds over their bill with the threat of a governor's veto. He will do the right thing and he will affix his signature the right to thing it would have as quickly as he gets the bill. The Republican bill blocked. The Democrats' temporary bill passes. The governor likely to create a storm with his veto pen. Men in hard hats. My husband passed in December of 14 from larynx and esophageal cancer. An environmental cleanup in a residential neighborhood. They said our pro property, it was um, lead and I believe it might have been arsenic. Contaminated soil and the belief among some residents that it may be causing cancer, breast cancer in one woman. And I went through all of the treatment and stage three and lymph nodes at 39 years old. There are people that are younger than they should be getting very, very bad cancers that you wouldn't expect. The culprit? The 100-acre Hegler Superfund site. Closed in 1954, it is a toxic soup of waste, including arsenic and lead, blowing in the winds into the Hegler neighborhood. The contamination in this yard is, is horrible. In this area, it's horrible. I went out of the neighborhood and I can't sell my house now. A mountain of trouble. Slag, a waste product from zinc smelting, nearly 55 feet high over six acres. Slag used as fill in driveways, alleys, and along some roads in Hegler and Tilton. A $4 million cleanup, digging up two feet of dirt on 39 properties. For each individual property, we anticipate five to seven days from removed from excavation to, to um, putting down clean uh, sod on top. Dirt trucked out of the neighborhood, but not dumped in an EPA-approved landfill. When they dig up the dirt, it doesn't have to go far at all. In fact, they're bringing it right back to where it started, at the Hegler Zinc site. If it contaminated this area before, why is it not going to do that again? I mean, they've been testing this ground for ever since we've been living here, and there's never been anything done about it. So why now? EPA says the dirt will be moved again as part of a future cleanup on the zinc site. I want to know why they are only doing a certain area of my yard and not my entire yard. The cleanup is only on land EPA says is contaminated. Lots that are an island of green squeezed into a patchwork of properties where dirt is being removed. My mom owns a house on the main drag. She wanted it tested. They refused to test it. They said it's fine. For years, the residents of Hegler have been told there is no threat to public health. Yet residents map out homes with yellow stickers where people have been diagnosed with cancer, pink stickers for dogs with tumors, some cancers found in the nick of time. And thank goodness, because they said it was aggressive and it would have six months. Multiple cancers, all on the same block. So within a few houses of each other. Yeah, yeah, about 100 feet maybe. And a stricken parent. When she owned the house before she moved to Georgetown, breast cancer twice. A partial cleanup, full of fear, it is not enough. Some of your neighbors have had cancer as well. Oh yes, and passed away. We've lost them. Maybe we're fortunate or not fortunate, however you look at it, that they didn't just call this like Love Canal and close the whole thing down and ship us all out of here. Arsenic and old lead from a plant shuttered decades ago. For the I team in Hegler, Doug Wolf, WAND News. Suffering a stroke.
doesn't mean you have to lose your stroke. When the chips were down, Dale Jones of Decatur was determined to find a way to get people out of the rough. It started with my brother about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, I had a stroke. Ah. He had a stroke, and we spent the better part of last summer teaching him to play with one hand. While helping Ernie get back in the swing of things, Dale decided to help others bounce back, setting up a golf league with the Decatur Park District for veterans and those with disabilities. Get him up off the couch, get some uh, fresh air and sunshine, you know, and get a little, uh, little exercise. If they're a veteran, if they have a disability, they're welcome to come out. I mean, I'm paralyzed on the left side. Phil Young had his stroke four years ago. Dale gave Phil a mulligan as he starts the newest round of his life. Did you think you'd ever be able to play again? No, I didn't. That's what I told Dale. I said, I don't think I'd ever be able to play. Putting. You like to putt? Yeah, I can putt real good. Veterans and the disabled golfing without a handicap. Doug Wolf. WAND News.